Here in this question on modulo arithmetic, we are asked to draw a table for multiplication in modulo 8 on the set t is equal to 2, 3, 5, 7. So these are the elements in the set t. And we are to use the table to find the solution set of 3 multiplied by n is equal to 5 under modulo 8 and n multiplied by n is equal to 1 under modulo 8. So um, to draw the multiplication table in modulo 8 we need to come up with our truth table and it is just as shown here okay i'll be using this to explain so we have this operation as a multiplication operation i want to carry out on the set 2357 and we are going to have it on the horizontal and the vertical column so that they can multiply each other now for me to really explain how we can make use of this to solve the question in modulo 8 let's imagine that we have a work clock that is having a maximum hour of 8. Okay, so since we are working with modulo 8, that means that the maximum hour that we should be considering is 8. Our normal traditional work clock is having 12 as a modulo operation in which it is working. And what you notice is that once you get to 12, you can say 13 hours or you can say 1 o'clock. You can say 14 hours or you can say 2 o'clock. You can say 15 hours. Or you can say three o'clock and the same principle we are going to apply here because here on this particular clock in which we are working in modulo eight we already have zero to seven and after seven since it's modulo eight we don't get to it we round off on that particular eight. that's why we are going back to zero but if we are going to get to let's say nine ten eleven how do we go about it so we know seven is seven then zero is running up to eight so one is congruent to 9, 2 is congruent to 10, 3 is congruent to 11, 4 is congruent to 12. Congruent is the language that we use in modular arithmetic, okay? 5 is congruent to 13, 6 to 14, 7 to 15, and then once the circle is completed, we have this as 16, which will round up to 0 again, okay? If we want to continue, we have here 17 is also congruent to 1. 18 is also congruent to 2, 19 to 3, 20 to 4, 21 to 5, 22 to 6, 23 to 7, and then again 24 will round up on 0. Okay, so this is a very good means with which we can actually understand the concept of modular arithmetic so that we will be able to evaluate this question as requested. Now let's take an hypothetical number let's say we want to look at nine okay ideally what we use in modular arithmetic is the remainder okay the remainder is our friend that's our tool that we use to actually evaluate modular arithmetic and it is just like this when we are considering nine how do we get the congruent of nine on modulo eight we can say nine divided by eight we know that is one okay because it's the first complete circle that is one but the remainder is going to be one if you want to look at 12, 12 divided by 8, we know it's just 1, okay? But the remainder is 4, all right? If you want to look at 15, 15 over 8 is also 1. That is the first circle, but the remainder is 7. So, it's the remainder that is actually the ideal factor where we are looking at that will be the congruent of whatever number that we should have gotten. But now, we are going to use the remainder in this modulo 8 as the answer to what we are looking for so for example let's say we want to look at 11 okay in modulo 8 what we do is just we divide it by 8 and now 11 over 8 you know that is 1 but that's not our focus is the remainder we are looking for and the remainder is 3 so we say it is 1 plus 3 but our focus is nothing but this particular 3 that we are looking for so you can see here 11 is congruent to 3 and the modulo 8 instead of writing 11 what we write is what is 3 okay like let's say we are looking at 21 again okay if you want to consider 21 so you can say in modulo 8 21 is 21 over 8 so 21 divided by 8 that is actually 2 what is the remainder the remainder is our point of interest the remainder is 5 because 21 divided by 8 that is 2 you can say 2 times 8 is 16 21 minus 16 that is 5 and you can see here it is 5 so again 5 is our point of interest when we're talking about 21 
in modulo 8. So it's this remainder that you effectively help us to get the value under modulo 8 when we are working on a question like this. You can apply the same to any other question. This is modulo 8. You can use it for modulo 9, for modulo 15, for modulo 20, for whatever you are working on. So with this understanding, we can now go ahead to look at the solution to this particular question. In the first case, we are looking at multiplication. So what we do to this number set is that we multiply the row and the column. In the first case, 2 times 2, that is 4. That is now up to 8. Okay, so it's as if we are going on our first circle, this 0 to 7. So we just write the exact figure, which is 4. Okay, 2 times 3 is 6. It's also not up to 8, so we can write that. Now, 2 times 5, that is 10. How do we get the value in modulo 8? We say 10 divided by 8. But we are looking for the remainder. Of course, 10 divided by 8 is just 1. But the remainder is 2. And you can see here on our table here, we have 10. The remainder is 2. So what we put here is 2. Okay. In the, in the next case, 2 and 7. 2 times 7 is 14. So when we divide 14 by 8, that's just 1. But that value is not what we are looking for. We are looking for the remainder. Okay. So the remainder is 6 because... 14 over 8 is 1, and then 6 is the remainder for that particular value. So this is 6. In the same way, we can just carry out the other figure. So since I, I believe that now you understand, let's just go ahead and carry out the evaluation of this table. So 2 times 3 here is 6. 3 times 3 is 9. 9 over 8, we have a remainder of 1. Okay. Then 3 times 5 is 15. 15 over 8, 8 will go there 1, but the remainder will be 7. Just like we have here, you can see it is 7 that we have here. So this is 7, okay? 3 times 7, that is 21. Do we have 21 here? 21. The remainder is 5, okay? Then 2 times 5, that is 10. And already we've used that and a lot. 10 is actually congruent to 2. So 2 is what we have here. 3 times 5 is 15. We've done that before here. 5 and 3 is also 3 and 5. So that will give us 7, okay? 5 times 5, that is 25. 25 divided by 8, we have 3, but we are looking for the remainder, okay? 8 times 3 is 24, so the remainder is 1. So here yeah, we have 1, okay? Then 5 times 7, 5 times 7 is 35, okay? If we use 8 to divide 35, we are going to have 4. 8 times 4 is 32. 35 minus 32, that is 3, okay? So here, yeah, 2 times 7, I think we've done that before. 2 times 7 is also 2 times 7. So this is 6. Then 7 times 3, that's 21. We've also done that before. Okay, 7 and 3, so this is 5. 5 times 7, yes, yeah, 7 and 5. 7 and 5, have we done that before? Yes, it's here, it's 3. And then the last one is 7 and 7. 7 times 7 is 49, okay. 49 divided by 8, that's going to give us 6. 8 times 6 is 48, 49 minus 48 is 1, so it's 6 remainder 1. So it's this one that is our point of interest that we need to put on our modulo table. So this is also 1. Now, take a look at this particular table and look at the symmetry that we are noticing. Here we have 6 and 6, okay? Here we have 2, 1, 2, or better still, if we just look here, we have 1, 1, 1, alright? Here we have 2, 2, yeah, you have 6, 6, yeah, you have 7, 7, yeah, you have 5 and 5, you have 3 and 3. And you can see that there is a symmetry that is quite observable if you are working with this. The more you work on it, the better you are going to get. So, for this particular question, in question A, this is a solution as requested of us. Now, in question B, we are going to use this table to find the solution set of 3 multiplied by n is equal to 5 under modulo 8. Look at what we are giving. We are giving 3 multiplied by n. Now that is equal to 5. So what we need to look at our table is that in the places where we have 5 as the value of our entry, what number is multiplying 3? Okay, that is n. What number is multiplying 3 to give us that 5 as the solution? Look at this. This is where we have 5. This is 5 and this is 5. So you have 3 3 here and 7 or we have 3 here and 7. So 3 times 7 is what is giving us 5 under modulo 8 and that means that comparing with our table 
the table shows that our n is actually nothing but 7. 7 is the number that we are using to multiply 3 to give us 5. But look at what they asked us to find. That's to find the solution set. And this is the way they give us the set initially. Okay. So that means they are asking us to write it in this particular set format. So we can say it shows that n is defined such that n is equal to 7. Okay. So this is a set notation format that we can use to actually give our answer okay so that's one in the other case we are given that n multiplied by n is equal to one okay so what are the cases in which we have one as the answer to our numbers you can see this is one this is one and this is one okay so what number is multiplying itself to give us that one in the first case we have three okay this is three in the second case we have five can you see that this is five in the third case we have seven and you can see that this is seven so we have that from the graph the solution set is nothing but what we are giving is n such that n is equal to three okay three will multiply itself to give us one but that's not the only one we also have five okay five will multiply itself to give us one and then we also have seven seven will multiply itself to give us one so this is the solution set and this is the other solution set and with this we've been able to look at how to solve question on modular arithmetic here we are working in modulo eight but you can as well use these principles to solve for any other modulo that you are working with all right so these are the kind of videos that we constantly upload on day to academy so that they can help you to build your proficiency in your stem subjects and be the best that god had created it to be if you are yet to subscribe to the channel it is free of charge and it's not going to cost you anything but you will have information and access to all of our videos once we upload them so go ahead and subscribe to the channel click on the like button click on the notification bell so that you have notifications of our videos once we upload them and until next time God bless you.